You're listening to the Brilliant Breakthrough Podcast, episode number 24 with Stacy Cott. Hi, small business owners. Welcome to the Brilliant Breakthroughs Podcast, where we focus on creating brilliant breakthroughs for the small business owner. FYI, this is also the name of the number one best-selling book for small business and entrepreneurship at Amazon. The good news is you can find this book in paperback or ebook form as well. So just so you know where and which one it is, go to Amazon and type in Brilliant Breakthroughs for the Small Business Owner, Fresh Perspectives on Profitability, People, productivity, and finding peace in your business. Well, hi, rock stars. My name is Maggie Mongan, and I'm the anthology leader of this great book. And today we're here and honored to have Stacy Cott, a number one best-selling author, with us to talk about your business's people performance simply through improving the headshot of you and attracting the right customers to you. Welcome, Stacy. Hi, thanks, Maggie. Thank you for having me. Oh, hey, this is going to be great. I'm excited because you have a really different message. You ready to uh, step into that after I share a little bit more about your chapter in this book? Definitely. I'm excited to talk about it. All right. Okay, so Stacy's chapter is the fourth one, and it's titled, Why Your Headshot May Be a Turnoff and How to Turn It On. So, Stacey, you covered a lot of ground in your chapter, like a lot of to-dos and (laughs) don'ts and tips and wisdom from the pros. And yet, at the same time, you only scratched the surface of the challenges that small business owners have when it comes to really tapping into the power of headshots, right? Right, definitely. Yeah, and and it's amazing because it's obvious, Stacey, that you are passionate about headshots and you write about why your headshot really is your first impression for the marketplace, right? So what makes, this is like the big question everybody has because I, I think a lot of people still don't get it is what makes your headshot your first impression and why is it so important for your business? Well, the biggest thing that always sticks out in my mind is according to psychologicalscience.com, it takes less than six seconds for someone to form an opinion on you based on what you look like. And, you know, when you're online scrolling through pictures, say you you're looking for an attorney or a copywriter or a CPA and maybe you go to LinkedIn and you know, you click in, you know, who you're looking for. You're looking for an attorney and you start scrolling through all the attorneys that show up in your, in your city. And some of those pictures are not going to look very professional or maybe they're a selfie or Maybe they're too dark to see who they are, or maybe the picture is taken so far away that you don't see their face. So when you are scrolling through there, there's going to be something that's going to attract your attention. And it's kind of hard to describe exactly what that is, but there's some obvious things. Obviously, we want to see a good picture, a close-up of your face, your head and shoulders, um, what? Not our dog? <laughs> not our dog. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> not you at a bar with a beer in your hand or with your arm around somebody. <laughs> well, shots don't work so well, okay? <laughs> and I, I'm sorry for interrupting because you're really getting in your zone. So, okay. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's funny. That's funny. But it's well, be, because we all know how true that is, right? We're scrolling through and we kind of go, what? LinkedIn is a professional networking site. It's the biggest professional network there is. And people put themselves on there like they don't care. Or they don't put themselves there at all. Or there's no picture at all. Yeah, and that's even worse. Or their picture is 20 years old. And I'm going to laugh about this because 
I started dating this guy about two years ago and I, mm-hmm. you know, of course I'm checking him out. Right. You know, I Google people and I find his picture um, from work and I'm like, that doesn't look like him. Like, wow. I mean, this doesn't look like this person at all. It's like at least 20 years old. And so I kind of, I confronted him, you know, and I said, Hey, you know what? I'm telling you this to be kind (laughs) (laughs) because I don't, you know, to me, when someone puts a picture on there that doesn't look like them anymore, it's like, it makes me think that maybe they're not updated in their business and what they do. Like they don't care about it. And so when I did confront him, he said, well, I got a headshot and I did not like it. And so I didn't put it on there for that reason. And then of course I did a new headshot for him and now it's on there. But, but, um, so people have a lot of different reasons why they may not have a good headshot either. I've, I've talked to multiple people that have gotten a headshot and didn't put it up on LinkedIn because they didn't like it. They didn't feel like it looked like them or that it was like, it showed who they were. You know, maybe it was like too stiff or too fake looking. It didn't feel authentically them. Okay. So, you know, but the other thing that's important is kind of that when you're seeing those pictures, you're going to connect. There's a bunch of different things that affect, you know, there's the psychological things behind whether you're going to feel like you can connect with somebody or not. Maybe that person that you're looking at reminds you of someone that beat you up when you were a kid. I mean, (laughs) obviously you're kind of going to shy away from that person. So, you know, there's going to be those kinds of things that affect, um, what people see and how they view you. But there's a lot of things that you can, little things that you can do that make a difference as a whole that are going to help you. Like don't, you know, look put together, look like what you look like today. If you've updated your hair or your glasses or your style, you know, make sure you have an updated picture to show that, Um, you know, don't use a selfie. Don't go without a photo at all because then people don't go, who is this person? Is this really, you know, there's their name and there's this picture of nobody. Who is this person? Right. You know, so there's, so there's all of that. And as a matter of fact, I was um, on a panel discussion on first impressions a few weeks ago. Oh, cool. And um, uh, Dr. Keith Burton, a, a local Milwaukee area guy, uh, who's an assistant professor of psychology says it takes less than one tenth of a second. Wow. To form a, to form a judgment. I mean, you know, like when you're on Facebook or when you're on, um, you know, even on LinkedIn, right. And you're reading the feeds, you right. recognize people's face, like people that, you know, you recognize their face and you know, like, Ooh, I don't want to read their stuff or, Oh, they also have great stuff. I want to read them, but they were recognizable to you. They had the same picture everywhere you see them. You know, so there's that recognizability factor as well. Yeah. You know, um, as you're saying that, I'm thinking of somebody who uh, had the same headshot or profile shot for a very long time on LinkedIn. And it was current. It It reflected who they were. But they just got in the habit like the last half of the year where they're changing it up now often. and. And it's, it's sort of creating a little static in my head. And it's somebody that I follow. And until you said one tenth of a second to make a judgment and that we, you know, we count on seeing them. And if we see them, that's the trigger to read whatever it is they're posting. Right. right. And I'm having difficulty with that now with this one person. So yeah, I didn't even. You're, looking, you're scrolling, looking for their stuff. And all of a sudden, where are they? Right. right. Or- that doesn't look like them. That's kind of weird. Or you miss them because they don't look the same. Right. Yeah, and it's a guy, which makes it even stranger because, you know, women, they change their hairstyles. <laughs> that's a little different, but he's pretty much looking the same, but his background's different. His colors are different. And he's, yeah, he's losing me. <laughs> he's using you. No, losing, oh, losing. losing you. Yeah. <laughs> because I can't find him so easily. Yeah. Right. Right. That it is really true. So I always tell people, make sure you use the same picture everywhere that you are, your name, spell it the same exact way and your face the same way everywhere you are. That way you're more recognizable people. It's easier to find you. So that is one important thing when getting your headshot done to utilize it properly. Okay, cool. That's good. Thanks for the tip. So, yeah, so when you think about these couple seconds to form a judgment, you kind of got to think, you know, what does my picture say about me? 
<laughs> no? Like, does it show like a, like this one guy that I know has got this picture. He's the nicest guy. And I've tried to, I even said, come into my studio for free. I'll give you a headshot. He refused to do it. But he has this picture where he's just like looking off to the side with his chin kind of up and he looks kind of standoffish. Like he doesn't want to engage with me, right? He's not even looking at me, right? In the picture. Okay. He's got this weird color going on in the background that doesn't really do anything for him. There's no purpose, you know? And I, I don't connect with that. So in person, he's this very friendly, um, lovely guy. And his picture just doesn't show that. So when I scroll through and I'm looking, I just, I can't connect with that picture. I cannot connect with that person. Sure. Sure. That makes you sense. Know? So you really got to think about when you're putting your picture out there, what is that picture saying to other people? I mean, if you're a friendly, happy go lucky person and your picture shows this dodgy looking person, <laughs> you know, it's not you, you're not going to attract people that way. Right. And that really leads to the point on how you opened up your chapter in the book. And you said, don't chase your target market away with a bad headshot. People are looking for you and your product or service. So don't miss out on the opportunity with potential customers using your headshot as an effective marketing tool, which I think I just sort of said. (laughs) 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 That this person's sort of messing with my brain here. (laughs) Um, And and, and then you say with guidance, you can attract more customers than ever before. Why don't you talk to us about how, to, you know, really a, a headshot is an effective marketing tool because that's a new concept. Yeah. So like I said before, using that same headshot with your name, but what does that headshot say about you? How can I get, when you come to my studio for a headshot, how can I get your picture to say something? So there's a lot of things involved in that. First of all, you kind of got to know what you're going to say. What do you want people to know about you? And I always say, of course, you want people to know that you're confident. You know, com- so when, when, I, when I look at the pictures, I want to see some sort of confidence exude from that photograph. Because nobody really wants to work work with someone who's not confident, right? About what they do. You want to hire someone (laughs) as an attorney who's not confident? Not a good idea. Yeah, not a good idea at all. (laughs) Or a business coach is not confident. You don't want to hire someone like that. So confidence is one of the main things that I always look for. But there's also this approachability factor where, um, like, you know, you guys are only hearing us, but Maggie and I can look directly at each other on this Zoom call that we're on. So. I feel like I'm sitting right next to Maggie when I'm looking at her. I mean, we're like eye to eye. And when I take a picture of someone, I want to see that eye to eye connection, right? Because people work with people, right? They want to know who you are and they want to get some sort of a feeling from you. And if they want to work with you, it's got to be a good feeling. So I try to capture people in a natural state that makes it feel like we're just engaging in conversation. Oh, okay. So you're talking about the more personable uh, attention, attraction magnet, right? Right. Right. That we actually, through our headshot, we feel like we are sitting across the table or desk from someone. Okay. I can connect because when I'm scrolling through those pictures, something's got to make me connect. And oftentimes that is, if you can at least have that, that natural feeling like you're having a conversation with somebody, that is something that people will be drawn into. Okay. Okay. It sounds kind of weird and it's like, you kind of don't know it till you see it. It's hard to explain it because it's visual, right? Okay. Um, so what I have people do is I have them come up with a couple of words that describe who they are. So this is really fun because. So one night I'm at this like networking event and it's like an icebreaker type event or something like that. Right. And we all get these little pieces of paper. I think it was Valentine's day. We got these sweet little hearts. It was this Fem city um, local group that I was involved that I'm involved in. And so everyone who came got uh, these little hearts with someone's name on them. And we had to write down three words to describe what we thought about that person. 
so, you know, there was one girl who was real shy. So I wrote shy that, that was to me, that's how she, how I could describe her. She's kind of shy and kind of quiet, but very bright, you know, smart. So I wrote those things down about her. And when I got mine back, I was like, I got arty, colorful, fun, adventurous, like all these fun things. And I guess I know I'm kind of like that, but I didn't know if that's how people perceived me. So through that, it helped me really kind of define a little bit more like, wow, that's how people perceive me. And luckily, it is pretty much who I am. I'm kind of silly and I like to have fun and you know, I'm already, I'm, I look arty. Anybody who knows me knows that, or you can look at my picture and probably tell that I, I have an arty feel to the way I look. So <laughs> it, it's a good exercise for people to do or to ask people that you trust, you know, what do you really think about me? What words describe who I am as a person? I, I agree and a with that. And a professional, you know, and, and what words describe me Obviously, if you're putting your picture on LinkedIn, it's for business purposes. What words describe you as a business person? Yeah. Not everybody's really fun and crazy like I am as a business person, but I can get away with it because of what I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is true. You can get away with it. And I've, I find it fascinating because the exercise of what are three words that describe you, they can be you and they can be the perception of others. Mm-hmm. And, and then cool and, and, other people perceive you, you know, it is good to know that because sometimes you're like, whoa, really? Do I really want to be perceived that way? Cause I'm not really that way, but I just, maybe I acted goofy cause I was nervous. Right. And, and then it goes further because it's like, how do you take that personality and then move it into a business context that's appropriate for your particular specialty? Yeah. And, and then how does that show up? Because that's a totally different animal. <laughs> like you, you were saying, there, there has to be that alignment between the, the image, what it's projecting, as well as how it fits into our particular industry. Because you, you wouldn't want a, a CPA that's at a New Year's Eve party. Exactly. Yeah, so th- well, there's all these things, and you're you're the mastermind behind the camera with all this, aren't you? Well, right, and so there's a bunch of different things that come into play. First of all, there's always a wardrobe discussion, right? <laughs> what are you going to wear, right? It's always an, you know, so there's a lot of different tips that I can give people as far as, like, don't wear a big bulky sweater if you're already, you know, a big person, you know, or... Yeah. You know, and the, and like if you're if you really want the background of the picture to be white, and you wear black, it's going to be very contrasting, and oftentimes black will make you look larger when there's a white background because you see all the details. Then, unlike if you were wearing black and we had a dark background, so there's oh. and that that cre- and that now that creates two different moods, right? There's also a whole different mood created with a dark background and a light background, right? And then there's and then there's lighting and how lit up everything is that can be moody or more bright and sunny or, you know, so with each person, (laughs) with each person, it's different because there's the physical aspect. I want you to physically look really nice. Right. So I, I, you know, I want to work with you to make sure you look physically nice. I want to make sure the lighting looks right. I want to make sure your what you're wearing looks good on you. It shapes your face really well. You know, your hair's fix. It's not flying all over the place, you know, depending on what you do again, maybe you're an airplane pilot and you want to have some wild style. I don't know. Um, you know, so there's all these little tiny details that are part of the photo shoot that need to be paid attention to in order to create that image that is more attractive. Well, sure. And a lot of it has to occur even before you walk in for the shoot, right? Right. Well, and just for one thing, just coming up with those words, when you come to the shoot with those words in your head, instead of, oh my God, I'm scared. You know, am I going to look okay? Because a lot of people have fear of being photographed. Am I going to look like me? I hated my last headshot. Most people hate their last headshot. Oh (laughs) yeah. It's like your your driver's license picture. Everybody (laughs) is not a fan of it. So let's talk about that for a moment because a lot of people have a fear or a dislike 
to getting a headshot. They do. Um, yeah. And because they maybe had a bad experience. Right. They maybe didn't have any guidance. Right. Oftentimes someone spent very little time with them. Which or is they'll, common. Yeah. Or they'll have too professional of a shot that doesn't look like them. It doesn't bring out their personality. Right. So I like to call it, you know, um, your business personality, you know, so it's not your, you know, going to the gym personality, right? I mean, that's two different things, right? You're, you're not walking the dog unless you're a dog walker. So I, I like to call it your business personality. And well, that, that makes a lot of sense because we have us as humans, but in business, we show up a different way because our business has a culture and And like your three words are trying to infuse that culture into an image that we call it. I mean, it is a combination because obviously it's a combination of authentically being you. Right. And you being at work and you presenting yourself to your potential client. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. How do you want them to see you? That's, you know, that's what you have to think about. And so what I try to do to get people over their fear, and it's a little bit of a trick, I have to admit. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, here's the secret. Well, the secret is having them come up with those three words and having them come into the studio thinking about their three words instead of, oh, my God, does my hair look right? Oh, is this picture going to, you know, because I say to people, what we're going to do is we're going to use those three words and we want you to look confident and approachable and bring some of your personality into it. Sometimes all three words don't exactly work together, but we like to bring something of that out in you to show the world so that your picture says something to people. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is a marketing tool and there's ways that if your headshot is done really well, it can attract customers to you. Mine works very well for me. So, you know, people oftentimes will say, oh, they recognize my picture. I look fun. I look, they say all the things that I want them to (laughs) know about me, which is so cool. You know, it's so great. So a headshot really does work. It really does. It makes a big difference in how people view you and whether they're going to scroll right by you and not look at you at all. Because if there is something bad, if the headshot just isn't very great or, it, you know, there is no headshot or it's just a terrible picture. Oftentimes people will then just completely ignore you, never even go in to look at all of your efforts that you put in on LinkedIn to say how awesome you are, right? You're, you're telling all these wonderful things that you do and how great you are at what you do on your LinkedIn profile and your picture doesn't show that. So, so it's got to be in alignment. Okay. So yeah, what you're saying is whether it's favorable or not, your headshot really is an effective marketing tool. It is. <laughs> so <laughs> it might not be getting us the results that we would like, which <laughs> then means, uh-oh, we need to think about a primary marketing tool that we already have. It's us. Mm-hmm. And we probably overlook it far too often. Right. It's us. It's our personality. So if I meet you in person, it's your personality that I'm attracted to. I mean, I have that immediate, like, boom, one-tenth of a second or whatever that it takes me to judge you. But then you can open your mouth. You can talk to me. We can have a giggle. You know, we can we have a conversation. Now, I feel like I get to know you with a picture. That stuff is can be missing. So you have to try to get that picture to be as much like who you are as you can. Okay. Now that makes a lot of sense because that is the magnet to attract people to you. Right. And And online, you know, as you know, Maggie, how many business coaches are there in the world? (laughs) I mean, there's new ones every day. How do you compete with all these people? That's exactly what you do. You have to differentiate yourself in every way. And your headshot is the first thing they see. So you better start there. Because if they don't like your headshot, boom, forget about it. You're gone. Yeah. And what's coming to me right now is like dentists. <laughs> <laughs> Which is sort of weird that that's popping in my head, but it is. <laughs> because if a dentist isn't 
smiling enough to show their teeth. Yes. You're wondering how good of a dentist they may or may not be. But then on the opposite side of the spectrum, if they're like all teeth in their smile and that's all you notice, instead of the fact that they're human, <laughs> you just see a rack of teeth. <laughs> right. It's it's not working either. Yeah, so there's, there's this missing. Yeah, there's this delicate balancing act right. that we need to be aware of because this marketing tool truly is a first impression. Right, right, definitely. And, wow. You know, and then the other thing to think about, you know, it, it goes and, and that's just the touch, the, the first touch. But after that, you really have to think about what is it that you you know, what does your LinkedIn profile say? What are you posting on social media? Because now all of that is part of your uh, accumulation of impressions yes. that you're putting out there into the world. And if you, you know, are out there, you know, complaining and whining, say, say you're a life coach and you're out there complaining and whining about stuff. Uh oh. On lo- you know, all of a sudden someone sees you're a life coach and yet you're sitting here complaining and whining about stuff. That doesn't really make sense to me. So then what you are posting online also needs to be in alignment with who you are, what you do, where you're, what you're trying to attract. Yeah. And that's, that's an interesting point because you know, everybody thinks that the therapist shouldn't be divorced and yet they're human. And, you know, we have to be mindful that as a professional to show up professionally and have that delicate balancing act of being human without, without discrediting our own expertise. Right. And that's kind of where like, you know, bringing out bits and pieces of who you are little tidbits of your story that kind of made you become who you are is kind of an important step to in creating that uh, authentic, you know, your authentic self online. Right. Right. Okay. So I'm really aware of how much time we have left (laughs) (laughs) because you just laid a ton of really great stuff on us. (laughs) Um, that really is at the beginning of the attraction process. Right. Okay. And before we go into our wrap up, I'd like you to share with our listeners, what's, what's the most important thing they need to know about their headshot? And you probably already said it, but let's drive it home one more time. The most important thing that you need to know is that people are going to look at it and they're going to judge you right away. So make a choice to get a good headshot with a photographer who understands what a good headshot is and provide that because it's going to attract, it's going to help you attract people instead of detract. Okay. So what I heard is don't think you can do this on your cell phone. Don't do a cell phone. (laughs) (laughs) Hire a professional. Make the investment because the ROI on this is there, whether you can see it directly or not. It is happening. It's definitely there. Okay. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Maggie. Yeah, well, we're not done, but. Oh, we're not done. (laughs) Okay, so, hey, listeners, this is how you can learn more and engage with number one bestselling author Stacey Cott. Start by reading chapter four in the book, Brilliant Breakthroughs for the Small Business Owner, and gift your business's performance by accepting the invitation Stacy is offering on her author's page at the end of the chapter. Plus, there's all sorts of social media handles for you to connect with Stacy on so you can um, understand more of what she's talking about because she puts it all out there. She doesn't hold anything back. She's there to serve you. And um, boy, if, if you need a headshot or you're thinking about anyone, start with chapter four. I think it's one of the best pieces of material out there. So here's something else that's really cool. Right now, you can see everything about the book and how to get a hold of it. And Stacy, by going to the book's app, Brilliant Biz Book. 
And so it doesn't matter if you're Apple or Android, go to your app store and type in Brilliant Biz Book, download that app, and on there, there's something that's really sweet for you. It's click on an expert, and you'll see Stacy Cott's name. Click on it. With my picture. Yeah, with her photo. <laughs> we have headshots of everybody there. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Okay, so click on an expert. You'll see Stacy Cut's name. And then type in your question that you have for her, and she'll get right back to you. So how's that for a cool bonus just for listening today? Pretty cool. Are you ready to help everyone out, Stacy? I welcome any questions you have anytime. Woohoo! All Woo-hoo. right. So thanks for your time and wisdom sharing today, Stacy. And listeners, we appreciate you listening to the Brilliant Breakthroughs podcast, where you learn more about how to create more brilliant breakthroughs for your small business. Shine brightly until next week.